Hark the sound of myriad voices rising in their might. Tis the daughters of Columbia pleading for the right. Raise the flag and plant the standard, wave the signal still. Brothers, we must share your freedom. Help us and we Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Votes for Women. This is a one to four player game, and this is actually the first in a two part video series. This video is going to teach you how to play this game for two to four players. And then I'll have another video teaching you to play one to two players against an automated opponent called the Oppobot. Both videos are meant to work as digital rule books, so feel free to check the timestamps and skip around to find whatever you need. So let's get started. This is a game about the American women's suffrage movement. And the goal for the suffragist player is to convince Congress to pass the 19th Amendment and then to build enough power in 36 states in the U.S. to ratify it. If Congress does not pass the amendment or if 13 states refuse to ratify, then the opposition wins and patriarchy reigns. We are going to start with setup and then move into a rules overview. So this is the game partially set up and I'm going to give you a tour of what we're looking at. So of course, right here in the middle, we have this lovely board for votes for women. And there's some key things to notice about it. The first is that the United States is divided up into regions and that those regions are numbered. So you have the West, the Plains, the South, the Midwest, the Atlantic and Appalachia, and the Northeast. And then within these regions, all the states are numbered one through eight. As you'll see once we get to talking about the rules, campaigners can go to different regions, but you're going to be placing cubes in different states, which is why these like little tiny states have circles so that you can put cubes in them without it getting awkward. Down here, you have spots for cards that have effects for various periods of time. So this space is for cards that are in effect for the rest of the turn, which will be noted by this little clock symbol. Here you have cards that are in effect for the rest of the game. So you get a little infinity symbol. And then cards that are in effect for final voting that have a ballot box symbol. Here we are gonna track support in Congress. So for Congress to pass the amendment and then send it to the states for ratification, we need to get six bits of support in Congress if we're playing on the suffragist side. And of course the opposition side is going to try to prevent that. So get ready to wrangle over Congress down here. And then here we have a turn tracker. This game takes place across six turns. So both sides have six turns to get their business done. That's our tour of the board. And now let's look at some of the other components of the game. This is our turn tracker right here. So it'll just hang out by turn one and we'll start using it when we do a little gameplay. These are the markers that indicate support in Congress. So if you are on the suffragist side of things, you're gonna to wanna to place these here to denote support. Uh, but if you are the opposition, you're gonna to wanna to take them away. We have our opposing decks of cards here, so the suffragist and opposition decks. And I'm gonna show you how to set these up momentarily. Then you have your campaigners for each side. The suffragists appear in two colors, purple and gold, and they're gonna have two gold campaigners and two purple. The opposition are gonna have two red campaigners because their color is red. I do want you to note that when you open the box for this game, you're actually gonna see more campaigners. There's alternate art, there's extra pieces because Fort Circle is pretty good about making sure that you have all the pieces you need. But for game setup, you only put out two campaigners of each color. So two gold, two purple, two red. These are the cubes that are gonna denote support in the states. So you have purple and gold cubes for our suffragists and you also have red cubes for the opposition. And this map is gonna be filled with cubes in all the states as we vie for power and support in them. Over here, we have 36 green checks. And over here, we have 13 red Xs. These are not gonna be used until later in the game because you use them to show whether a state has voted for or against the 19th Amendment. You wanna make sure that the correct number of them is out. So 36 on this side and then 13 on the opposition side because the opposition needs 13 states in order to have the country reject the 19th Amendment, whereas the suffragist side needs to place 36 checks in order to have enough states ratify the amendment for it to pass. So you wanna make sure that your numbers are right. Again, there are gonna be a couple extras in the box because this matters for whether you win. If you can place all of your checks or all of your X's out, your side wins. 
Up here we have some campaign buttons. So we have suffragist side campaign buttons and also opposition side campaign buttons. One thing that's very cool about these, by the way, is that these are based on actual historical art. So it's a man's world unless women vote was a real button out there at one point in history. Meanwhile, the opposition has this cranky vote no on women's suffrage. Buttons are a crucial part of the economy in this game. And I will absolutely be teaching you how to get buttons and why you would want them later in this video. We've also got a couple of decks up here that I'm gonna show you how to set up. We've got the states and we've got strategy. So these are cards that you can pick up throughout the game that give you extra cards to play on your turn that are quite powerful. So both the suffragists and the opposition are gonna really want these and they're gonna to have to fight hard for them. There will be some states at the beginning of the game that offer bonuses. And there's also going to be strategy cards that you bid for every turn after the first turn. So I'll be showing you how to set these decks up, lay these cards out, and then we will play far enough into a sample game for you to see how to bid for a strategy card. There are also a bunch of dice included with the game. I just want to say my favorite thing is that these are actually D4s, even though it is a D12, because Kevin Bertram, the man in charge over at Fourth Circle Games, despises D4s because they are pointy, so you will have a non-pointy D4 to play with in this game. We'll get to look at some of the dice as we do some sample turns with the cards. So now that we've done a general overview of the components, let's go ahead and set up our decks. So I'm gonna zoom in on the board and show you how to set up the suffragist deck, then the opposition deck, and then we'll look at the state and strategy decks. Here I've laid out all the cards from the suffragist deck. And as you can see, I've divided them into sections. We have a start card, which you're gonna keep separate from the rest. Keep the start card for yourself. It's gonna go in your opening hand. Then we have three eras of deck to shuffle. We have early, middle, and late. In order to create your draw deck, you're going to shuffle the late cards and put them on the bottom, shuffle the middle cards and put them on top of the late cards. And then you're going to take the early cards, shuffle those and put them on top of the entire deck. And again, you're going to keep your starting cards separate so that you have it in your hand when the game begins. Similarly, the opposition deck will also have a start card and then cards from the early, middle and late stages of your game. You're going to shuffle the late cards first, put them on the bottom, then the middle cards, put them on top of the late cards, the early cards, which go on top of the deck, and you'll keep your start card to the side because that's gonna go in your opening hand if you're playing the opposition. So now we've set up our main player decks, but there are two decks of cards that remain to be dealt with. We have the states and we have strategy. So let's handle the states first. You're gonna take the state deck, you're gonna shuffle it, and you're gonna set aside the top three cards. And these are not gonna be used this game. You should return them to the box. Then you're gonna take the remaining state cards and you're gonna lay them out in a place where both players can see them. And these are state cards you're gonna vie for throughout the game. So in this game, we're gonna have New York, California, Kansas, Montana, Ohio. And let's move some of our stuff to increase our view, Illinois, Virginia, Georgia, and New Jersey. So I'm gonna arrange these by region once we start to play because I like to do it that way, but we're gonna lay out the strategy cards first. So to get the strategy card deck set up, you're gonna shuffle it, and then you're gonna set out three strategy cards. It's kind of like a strategy card market. And the rest can be just placed as a deck to the side for now. And we're going to talk about how to get and use strategy cards during this tutorial. So let me reorganize these. And then we're going to be set up to talk through the turn structure of a game of what's for women. So we've got all of our state cards and I've just arranged them from west to east, from left to right. So it's kind of like reading because um, it makes it easier for me to see which states I need to be paying attention to. And then our strategy cards are right here. Now that the game is all set up, we're ready to talk through the structure of a turn. So let's go ahead and put our turn marker on turn one. And we're gonna talk about the stages of a turn of votes for women. I also wanna restate what our goals are here before we get started. So to repeat, the suffragist needs to lobby Congress to pass the 19th amendment. So we gotta get all of our little white cylinders here in order to pass the amendment. The opposition will want that not to happen. And then if the amendment passes Congress, everything gets turned over to the states for ratification. Once you hit that stage of the game, then the suffragist side is going to want 36 states to ratify the amendment, which will be symbolized by putting little check marks in those states. And then the opposition is going to want 13 states to reject the amendment, which will be denoted by placing X's in those states. 
And throughout the game, we're going to be moving campaigners around from region to region. We're going to be placing influence cubes in the states to try to garner support. And we'll just have to see how it shakes out in the end. Turn structure in this game is, I'm happy to say, mercifully simple. You're going to have six total turns in the game, as indicated by the turn tracker down here at the bottom right of the board. And each turn is going to consist of four phases. The first phase is planning. The second phase is strategy, which does not happen in the first turn, but it does happen in all the following turns. So we're going to talk about when and how. There's operations, which sounds a lot scarier than it actually is. It's just playing your cards. And then there's cleanup. And both sides have the same phases when they take their turns. So this information applies to both the suffragists and to the opposition. Let's go ahead and start with the planning phase. When you plan, what that means is that you draw six cards from your deck. So you start the game with one card in your hand, your starting card, and then you're going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards to form your opening hand of seven total cards. And because of the way that you constructed your deck, they're all going to be early. This is also true for the opposition. They will draw one, two, three, four, five, six cards from their hand and add it to their starting card that begins in their hand. And that's truly all that planning is. You draw up. You should start every single turn of the game with seven cards. You're going to end every turn of the game with one card. So during the operations phase, which we're going to get to, you're going to play six of your cards, and then you're going to end the turn with one card carried over in your hand to the next turn. So that's planning. Draw six cards. That's it. Next, you have strategy. So strategy is something that you're actually going to skip during the first turn, but we're going to talk about it now just to keep all of our turn stuff together. So let's put our starting hands aside for the moment and talk about strategy. The strategy phase of your turn is where you bid on a strategy card. So one of these three cards up at the top of the board that both sides are going to want because it has benefits for each side. The reason that you skip this phase during turn one is that nobody has acquired any buttons during turn one. And buttons do a number of other things in the game, which we're going to get to. But one thing that they do is they allow you to bid on a strategy card. During the strategy phase of a turn, the suffragist player has to go first and they're going to announce how many buttons they're going to commit to the strategy phase. So if you only have two buttons, maybe you only have two buttons to commit. You might want to use them for other things and you're going to have to decide, is it worth ponying up these buttons in order to get a strategy card? Then after the suffragist ponies up how many buttons they're willing to risk on trying to win this bidding war, the opposition has a chance to respond. Let's say that the opposition has three buttons, but maybe they don't want to use all of their buttons either. So to illustrate, let's say that the suffragist player decides, you know what, I really want a strategy card. I'm going to bet both of my buttons that I can get this card. Then the opposition player has a choice. They can choose to just defer. They don't spend any buttons at all. The suffragist still loses both of these buttons, and then the opposition player has more buttons than them going into the next turn. The opposition player could alternatively choose to match, and if the opposition player matches the amount of buttons that the suffragist has ponied up, then they both spend all of the buttons and nobody gets any strategy cards. So the opposition could just choose to prevent anybody from picking up a strategy card and waste the suffragist buttons but it also waits theirs, which will have some consequences as we'll discuss soon. Alternatively, if the opposition player spends more buttons than the suffragists do, then they get to choose a strategy card themselves. And then again, all buttons are spent. So regardless of outcome, all of the buttons that you ante up for this process will be discarded and you don't have them anymore. So you've spent your in-game currency on the strategy phase. But essentially whoever wins gets to take a strategy card and put it in their play area. So let's say that the suffragist wins this one. They put up their two buttons and the opposition's like, haha, spend your buttons, we'll just let you have it. Hmm. They get to keep all their buttons. Uh, the suffragists would have to spend all of their buttons, but they would get a strategy card. And I'm just gonna grab one um, because I'm gonna show you how it works momentarily. So we'll just take the strategy card and we'll put it here in its own little spots in our play area and I'll show you how to use it. Also, at the end of the strategy phase, if one of the players ends up selecting a strategy card, you leave the two that were originally there, and then you add a third one from the deck to refill the strategy card market. So that concludes the strategy phase. And again, you're not gonna actually do this on turn one because nobody has any buttons to bid with. You're just gonna to have to wait until turn two when there's a little bit more action going on. But that is the second phase of a full turn in Votes for Women. 
Now we're going to move on to the third phase. That's the operations phase. And what that really means is that you're going to be playing cards from your hand back and forth uh, for a total of six rounds. So the suffragist has seven cards in their hand. The opposition player will also have seven cards. And beginning with the suffragist, they're going to go back and forth until each side has played six cards. And then they'll have one card left over to carry into the next turn. There's a lot of thought that goes into how you play your cards, especially because they can be played four different ways. You can play a card as an event. You can play it for a campaigning action. You can play it for an organizing action, or you can play it for a lobbying action. And I'm gonna walk you through what each of those things would be. So the first and most obvious way to play your card is for its event. And that means that you're following the instructions that are written on the card. Some of these cards will allow you to receive buttons. Some of them will let you add cubes to the map. Some of them are going to let you put campaigners out because that's how you get your first campaigners out here to help you garner support. And then others are actually going to have events that only go through officially if you succeed on a die roll. And this is interesting because if you choose to play an event card that requires a die roll, if the die roll succeeds, then the event happens. If the die roll does not succeed, then you just discard the card, the event does not happen, and it's basically a wasted turn. You've played a card that did nothing and then you discard it. So there is some risk to playing an event that has a die roll, but this is where buttons come back in. So we talked about one use of buttons before, where you use them to bid on strategy cards during the strategy phase of the turn. However, buttons can also be discarded to allow you to re-roll a die, and you can discard as many buttons as you have to keep re-rolling until you run out, and then you have to live with the die results that remain. I should note also that when you choose to play a button to re-roll, it's to re-roll all dice. So if you really like one of your die results and you don't like the other one, that's tough. You're going to have to re-roll both if you choose to spend a button. So that's an overview of playing a card for an event. You follow the instructions on the card, and if that involves a die roll, then you can spend buttons to keep trying for the result that you want. Your second option for playing a card is to play it for a campaign action. In order to campaign, you need campaigners. So I'm going to place one campaigner here in the Midwest and one here in the Plains to illustrate what happens when you discard a card for a campaign action. So if I wanted to play Anna Dickinson for a campaign action, I would discard this card. And then I would roll a D4 for each of my campaigners. So let's go ahead and grab two D4s and see what we get to place. That was thrilling. Okay, so I have a two and a three. So I would basically assign one die to one of the campaigners and the other die to the other campaigner. So let's say that we're gonna give purple campaigner a two and yellow campaigner a three. At this point, I can either place two cubes in one of the states in this region and three cubes in the other, or before I place any cubes, I can pay a button if I have one to move my campaigner to another region. And that can actually be done before or after you place cubes. However, you cannot place some cubes in one region, move, and then keep placing cubes. So let's say I wanted to place two purple cubes in Colorado and then spend a button to move to the west. That would be a perfectly legal move. I would also have the option of spending my button to move to the west and then putting my two cubes in California or another western state. However, I could not place one cube in the plains, then move, and then place one cube in the west. I just have to place all my cubes wherever I ended up. So campaigning essentially is a way to get more cubes out in regions where you need them, and you're going to be fighting for control of various states. Basically, a state is fully on your side if you manage to get four cubes there, and so you are going to be constantly battling back and forth to see who can place those cubes. Placing four cubes and having dominance in a state is important for two reasons. When you hit final voting, that is the threshold for getting a check or an X in a given state. So make sure that you don't let your opponents get too many cubes and then guarantee a win in states that you would like to contest. Other thing that having four cubes in a state will do is allow you to collect the state card the first time someone reaches four cubes there. So for example, we have Illinois as a state card up here. If I had somehow been able to place four yellow cubes in Illinois, so if I had rolled a four and decided to do that, I could place those four cubes, take the state card, and put it over here with the strategy card as another option for play during the operations phase. So playing for an event on a card is great, but playing the campaign is also going to be a crucial thing that you do during the course of the game because you've got to get these cubes out to claim state cards, to move your campaigners around the country, and to make sure that you're efficiently vying for dominance against your opponent. And I used suffragist players here, but the same rules apply for red campaigners. They also can campaign by discarding a card, 
rolling a d4 for each campaigner present on the map and placing cubes accordingly. And they also must spin buttons to move their campaigners from region to region. So that's how a campaign works. So let's give ourselves this card back and then I'll show you another way that you could choose to use it. The third way that you can use a card is to take an organizing action. So I could discard a card to take as many buttons as I have campaigners in play. So if you only have one campaigner, you only get one button for doing that. If you've got two campaigners, then you can pick up two buttons if you discard a card for an organizing action. This is one of those actions that doesn't always seem ideal because it's much better to be campaigning really hard and getting cubes out and making your presence known. But as you've also perhaps noticed, buttons are a crucial part of this game's economy. You need them to get strategy cards, you need them to reroll dice, and you need them to move your campaigners from region to region. So if you don't have any buttons, you can't move your campaigners and there will be situations where you're just absolutely desperate to have them. So buttons can come from cards, but you can also discard a card to pick up a button for each campaigner you currently have in the field. Your last option for your cards, so we've just given ourselves Anna Dickinson back so we can discard her again and show another way that she could be used, is to take a lobbying action. So if you discard a card to take a lobbying action, then you roll a d6 for every campaigner in play. So once again, let's say that I've got, let's say I've got two campaigners. We'll put our two campaigners out and then I'll roll a d6 for each of them. So this is a very unfortunate roll because when you take a lobbying action, you roll a d6 for every campaigner in play. And then for each six that you roll, you can add to or take from congressional progress towards passage of the 19th Amendment. So if you are playing the suffragist side, you would use this action to try to add congressional support. If you are on the opposition side, then you're trying to use them to take away congressional support. But you might've noticed trying to roll a six on a d6 is pretty risky. So this is something that you only do if you're really seriously trying to fight for or against Congress getting your support to pass the amendment and there's nothing more productive that you can do with your cards. When you play a lobbying action, it goes well, however, it can swing the game and really stall your opponent out. So once again, there are four ways that you can use the normal cards in your hand. You can play them for the text on the card and follow the instructions. You can use them to campaign, which means that you discard the card, roll a d4 for each of the campaigners that you have on the map, and place cubes based on the numbers that you roll on those dice. During that action, you can also pay buttons to move your campaigners from one region to another to make sure your cubes are going where they need to go. Your third option is an organizing action where you can discard a card and take a button for each campaigner you have in the field. And then your fourth option is a lobbying action where you roll a d6 for every campaigner of yours in play. And then for each six that you roll, you can add to or take from congressional progress towards passage of the 19th Amendment. So that is how you play the cards that are in your hand. However, there are other cards that you're able to play, specifically strategy cards and state cards. So how do they work? Over the course of the game, you're gonna be vying to acquire strategy cards during the strategy phase. And you're also going to be trying to place enough cubes in states to take their state cards. So when you get four cubes of your own in a state, as we illustrated with Illinois earlier, you get to pick up that state card and add it to your tableau. Only one strategy or state card can be played per round. And you can choose to play that claimed card either before or after you play a card from your hand. When you play a strategy or a state card, you perform the text that's on the card. So for example, if we got efficient organizing, we could play it to receive five buttons. And then we would discard the card because we'd played it. So again, I could play this card before or after playing one card from my hand, and I can only play one strategy or state card per round. So make sure that you're not trying to chain too many of them together in a way that is not legal play. Plan them out from round to round so that you can get the most out of them over the course of this phase of the turn. The other thing to know about state and strategy cards is that you can hoard them until you think you really need them. So there's no requirement that you play a strategy card or a state card on the turn that you acquire it. You can wait for the situation to evolve and then play it when you're going to get the most out of it. So once players have played six cards each from their hands and then any strategy or state card that they have acquired and choose to play, the operations phase is over and we enter the cleanup phase. Cleanup is relatively simple. All you really need to do is check that cards that were in effect for the rest of the turn are removed so that they no longer impact the game. Their time is done. You must advance the turn marker to mark the start of a new turn. You make sure that each player has one card left over in their hand because if that didn't happen, then something went wrong during the previous phase. And at the end of turn six, you need to check to see if the 19th Amendment has been sent to the states for ratification. 
if the opposition player can stall out all the way to the end of turn six without Congress passing the amendment, then they will win the game. So that is a win condition that you have to check for at the end. Also at the end of turn six, if the 19th amendment has been sent to the states, but neither player has actually won the number of states required for victory yet, then the game is going to advance to a stage called final voting, which we are going to discuss in its own section momentarily. And after those four phases, you have completed a turn of this game, and we're going to play a real one after I clarify a few more things for you. All right, before our sample turns, there's a few things I just want to clarify one more time. First, buttons. You can acquire buttons either from card event text or by taking an organizing action during the operations phase of the turn. And you're going to need to make sure that you have a good supply because there are multiple ways to spend them. The first way is to re-roll a die roll. So if you roll a die and you don't get the result that you want, you can spend a button to re-roll. If you re-roll multiple dice, however, you do have to re-roll all of them, so choose wisely. Second, a button can be spent to move a campaigner from one region to another while you're taking a campaigning action. And if you move more than one campaigner, you have to spend a button for each. So if I'm in the West and I wanna take a campaign action, I need to spend a button in order to move my campaigner to another region. If I have two campaigners to move, I'll have to spend two buttons. Third, buttons are committed during the strategy phase and then they're spent. So any buttons that you commit during the strategy phase will be spent, but you definitely wanna outspend your opponents because it gets you those sweet, sweet strategy cards and you don't want the other side to have them. And then for, there are occasions where an event card text will ask you to spend a button. So make sure that you're reading the text on your cards before you play them to be sure that you're budgeting your buttons adequately. So that's coverage of buttons. Let's also talk about sending the 19th amendment to the states. One thing that's interesting about this game is that in its earlier phases, before the amendment is sent from Congress to the states, you're putting cubes in these states, but nothing is officially decided yet. That changes once the sixth white cylinder is placed in Congress. Once you do that, Congress has passed the 19th Amendment and it's gonna send it to the states to be ratified or rejected. You can go ahead and remove all the cylinders at that point because the phase is complete, but then you have to go through the states and figure out whether they have decided to ratify or to reject. So in a state that has four cubes that are suffragist colors, you're going to add a check a green check. And then you know that this state is all yours and there's nothing to contest anymore. If a state has four red cubes, then that state is going to vote to reject the amendment. And that one is officially decided against the suffragist side and in favor of the opposition. There are also going to be states that don't have the sufficient amount of cubes yet to decide one way or the other. And as long as there's still turns to play in the game, then you're going to keep playing cards and trying to place cubes. But every time somebody hits four cubes or more, then the state will vote to either reject or ratify, depending on whose cubes took primacy in that state. The very moment that the 36 check is placed, then the suffragists will win. And at the very moment that the opposition places their 13th X, then they'll win. So you have to be watching very carefully to make sure that you don't let the other side run away with ratification or rejection. As part of this conversation, I wanna talk about claiming state cards and adding or removing cubes in various states because these are very key parts of gameplay and you, make, you wanna make sure that you're doing it right. So let's say that there are two yellow cubes in Texas and one of the opposition campaigners would like to come and wipe them out and assert control, which sounds like an opposition is to me. The opposition campaigner cannot have cubes in Texas at the same time as there are suffragist cubes. So if the opposition is able to place one cube, it'll actually remove one of these yellow cubes instead of placing a red one. If it had two cubes to place, it would remove both and then the state would be empty. And then if it had three cubes to place, it would remove both and then place a red cube. So rather than have opposing cubes in a state at the same time, what happens instead is that the cubes that you place remove your opponent's cubes. And then once the state is empty, you can start to add your own. So make sure that you're being attentive to that and not mixing cubes as you play. As we mentioned, getting four cubes in a state is the magic number once Congress has submitted the 19th Amendment to the states for ratification or rejection. A state will vote for the amendment if there are four suffragist cubes there, and it will vote against if there are four opposition cubes there. Prior to Congress actually approving the amendment, however, it is still important to get your cubes out, partially as preparation for your final votes, and also partially because you want these precious, precious state cards. 
if our campaigner is able to place four cubes in the state of Georgia, then the opposition will be able to claim the Georgia card and add it to their tableau in order to use it later. So make sure that you remember four is the magic number for a number of purposes. One of the last things we need to talk about is final voting. In most games, in my experience so far, Congress will approve the 19th Amendment and then send it to the states to vote. And this will happen before turn six. So you'll get to spend some of the game pushing and pulling back and forth, trying to place checks and X's uh, using, your, using your normal card play and just getting cubes out there. If, however, you reach the end of turn six and not all of the checks or X's are placed, then you do what's called final voting. So in final voting, players are gonna take turns and you start with a suffragist player for this, but they take turns selecting a state to vote on the 19th Amendment. Each player is gonna roll a d6, and then either player can spend a button to re-roll their die. Any cubes that you have in the state then get added to your total roll. And then based on that, whoever has the higher total wins the state and then gets a check or an X. So just to illustrate, let's say that we have two cubes in Texas, but that's not enough, that's not four. And we've already reached you know, the end of turn six and we need to do our final vote. What's gonna happen is that the suffragist and the opposition are each gonna roll a D6. And in this case, the suffragists won pretty big, five, six, seven. So they would definitely win Texas. If things were a little bit more ambiguous, let's say it's two and two, and the suffragist decides not to spend a button to reroll, then the opposition can try to roll against them and push to get the state. The default actually is that the opposition player wins all ties unless the suffragist has a card in play called Miss Feb wins the last vote. So in this case, because Miss Feb wins the last vote is not in play, uh, the opposition would actually win this because it's four to four and the opposition wins ties without a special card in play. So at the end of the game, if all the turns are over, you're gonna do this for every state until all the final votes have been counted and we know who wins the struggle over votes for winning. And then we have a final section to discuss before we can actually do some gameplay. And that is how to play with either two suffragist players or two opposition players. And there are rules that allow you to split each of the sides into two players worth of work. On the suffragist side, what will happen is that one suffragist will play purple and the other one is going to play yellow. So you split the colors. Even though the suffragists are playing as two different colors, their buttons form a shared pool. So you're going to have to decide together how to spin those with some exceptions that we're going to talk about. During setup, the purple player is gonna get the start card officially. And then the yellow player is just going to draw an extra card as their start card. So the yellow player would just get a random early card. Then during planning, each player is gonna draw three cards instead of six. So if you're playing as one player with all of the campaigners together, you have a hand of seven. If you split them into two, then they are gonna play four and four. In the strategy phase where you commit buttons to try to get a strategy card, it's the yellow player who gets the final say about how many buttons to commit. So you should talk about it together, but the yellow player decides how many buttons to commit and also who's gonna get the strategy card if they win it as a result. During the operations phase, what's going to happen is that you're gonna split the rounds that you play. So the purple player is gonna play rounds one, three, and five. And then the yellow player will play rounds two, four, and six. And then in terms of cube colors that you can play, if you're campaigning as your color, you can only place cubes of that color. But if an event card allows you to place yellow or purple cubes, that remains the case and you can place cubes of either color, um, no matter which player you are, if the suffragist side is split into two. With two opposition players, things work very similarly. The players will pull their buttons together. And then again, in setup, the first player is going to take the star card. And then the second player is just gonna get a random early card. And then each of them will draw three cards during the planning phase to bring the total cards in each person's hand to four instead of seven, which was what they would get if they were one player. In the strategy phase, player two gets to decide how many buttons to commit and who gets the strategy card. In the operations phase, the player one who has the start card will play rounds one, three, and five. And then the second player will play rounds two, four, and six. The other thing that's true about both factions if you split them into two is that during cleanup, they can exchange their held card with each other if both players are good with that. And in final voting, they alternate picking states and rolling a die for their side. So you essentially share the labor of one player uh, in a pretty efficient way, just splitting it into two. 
With all that said, I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to play through one turn and then far enough into turn two to see a strategy phase. And that is where this video will conclude. Now that we've spent all that time going over the rules, let's go ahead and play a sample turn of this game. And then we're going to play far enough into turn two to see a strategy phase. So let's take our turn marker. We're going to put it on turn one and I've reset everything so I can model the entirety of a turn. Our first phase of the turn is the planning phase. We already have our start cards on each side and each side is going to draw six more cards to have a complete hand of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now everybody has got their opening hand. I'm just going to play as both sides to model this for you. The suffragists will go first, so we're going to start with them. Let's just have a quick look at our hand. We have a start card that's going to let us put some campaigners and cubes out, and that's almost certainly what we're going to do to begin with. We have Sojourner Truth, who will let us add cubes to the Midwest region. We have Pioneer Women, who will let us add cubes to the Plains region. Lucy Stone, who will let us get a button and then add a cube to one state of each region on the entire map. Francis Harper, who will let us add cubes in the Atlantic and Appalachia. Women to the Poles, that will let us add cubes in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And Anna Dickinson, who will give us a button, and then we can add one cube in one state of each region. We may or may not play all these cards for their events, and we are going to carry one over to the next turn, so we'll kind of see what we want to do. For now, I think the obvious choice is to start with the start card. So we're going to go ahead and play our start card, Seneca Falls Convention. And that's going to let us add one purple campaigner and one yellow in the northeast region. And the northeast region is right up here. So one and one. And our ladies are ready to go. We can also receive two buttons, which we will absolutely do right now. So we've got two buttons in our little supply. And we can add two cubes in New York. I'm going to add one yellow and one purple cube to New York. One thing to note about adding cubes is that you do want some diversity. These suffragists appear in two colors for a specific reason. And that's to show that when people have the same goal, that doesn't mean they want to get there the same way and they can still have internal disagreements. So there are cards that can remove all the yellow or purple cubes from various locations. You want to make sure that there's some diversity in the cubes that you put out because it can otherwise be strategically a disaster. So that was the Seneca Falls Convention. We have got our ladies out. They're ready. And uh, that was our first turn. Let's take a quick look now at what the opposition has. So we're going to take our first opposition turn. All right. So these dudes have a start card that's the patriarchy. And basically we can put a bunch of stuff out and it's pretty scary. Uh, we've got minor versus Happerset, which lets us roll dice and then remove Congress progress and add cubes in Missouri. We have Senator Joseph Brown, who's going to let us remove one support from Congress and then also add cubes in Georgia. 15th Divide Suffragists. Playable with the 15th Amendment is in effect. We will have to remove all purple cubes in up to four states. So remember what I told you about making sure there's a bit of diversity? Be sure you are planning for such events. And the suffragist player loses two buttons. Yikes. That's nasty. We have the Civil War. Also removes some support from Congress. And then for the remainder of the turn, the suffragist player cannot add cubes to any state in the Atlanta and Appalachia and South regions. South Dakota rejects suffrage. On a roll of three to six, again, you remove progress from Congress and then you add cubes in South Dakota. And then Senate rejects suffrage amendment. You roll a six and it can get you a button and again, let you remove progress from Congress. So it can be really difficult to get Congress to pass this amendment because there are a lot of cards that let the opposition just be like, no, 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 well, let's reverse that progress. So there's a lot of options in that opposition deck to make things tough. But once again, the start card is the start card for a reason. So we're going to begin with the patriarchy. Who? So this lets us add one campaigner in the South region. So a campaigner will go here. We're going to get four buttons. That's going to make our next uh, strategy round pretty difficult for the suffragists anyway. And then we're going to add one cube in each state in the Northeast region, 
the Atlantic and Appalachia region, and the South and Midwest regions. Like, ooh, there's just cubes everywhere. That's tough. So let's go ahead and get these cubes out. As you can see, historically, the suffragists had a lot to go up against because these cards are based on the reality of the situation in this time. All right, so let's do the South first since we're just here. We'll do the Midwest. Now we'll do the Atlantic and Appalachia. And for little states, you put the cubes over here. So these, these are where the Maryland and Delaware cubes will go. And then unfortunately, we also have to do the Northeast where we just place cubes. No, we're already losing progress. I've left New York for last. As you noted, we put two cubes here last time. So rather than put a red cube in New York, we're just gonna remove one of our cubes. So we're gonna take the purple cube back up and leave the yellow one. So we still have a cube there. It's just maybe not as many cubes as we want it. And that was the opposition's first turn. Now it is back to the suffragists. I want to fight for some state cards so that we can get them and I can show you what they do. Let's get our button to supply out of the way so we can look at their beautiful art. I think what I'm going to do first is, as much as I love being able to get a button and add cubes to one state in each region, that's not actually what I want to do right now. I'm going to discard this to campaign. I have two ladies here in the Northeast, and if I can get four cubes in New York, and then if I can get four in New Jersey, then I can take their state cards, which is a massive priority for me. I do not want the opposition player to get them. So we are going to get our butts out here and fight for this. So now that I've decided to campaign, I roll one D4 for each campaigner. And I got a four and a one. That's kind of tough because the four is great. The one is not. I could spend a button to reroll, but then I would also have to reroll the four as well as the one. So I'm just gonna take my lumps and we are gonna give the four to yellow and we're gonna give the one to purple. And now each of these campaigners is gonna get to put a bunch of cubes out. So in New York, let's go ahead and put our one. And then we have four yellow cubes to distribute. So let's do one, two. We'll pick this one up from New Jersey for three, four. So as you know, I didn't actually put four yellow cubes out because one of those cubes was spent removing the red cube from Jersey. However, we've had a success. We have gotten four cubes in New York, and that means that we are the first to get that much support in the state, and we're gonna get to grab the New York State card. And indeed, it is a very nice card. It's gonna let us add six suffragist cubes, it could have been six opposition cubes if we were the opposition, in the Northeast region, no more than two per state. So we're gonna keep this until we know where we need cubes most desperately in the state, but New York is gonna be there to help us soon enough. So I'm gonna just put this in my little tableau, and we can save this for a future turn when things in New York are looking a little more desperate. So I'm here for it. And that concludes the suffragist turn. Now we're back to the opposition and we'll see what they want to do. Perhaps the opposition has also realized that state cards are pretty valuable. So what we're gonna do is them is discard a Senate reject suffrage amendment. There's just not any support in Congress right now. There's no need to be worried about that at this particular moment. The ladies don't have it. So we're going to discard this card and we are gonna campaign down here in the South. So I'm gonna roll one D4 because I have one campaigner. And fortunately, this guy only got a one. <laughs> but we're gonna take that one cube. Actually, you know what, we're not. This one is not acceptable. So we're gonna spend a button. We got a lot of them, you know, to reroll. Ah, three, that's more like it. So we're gonna take our three cubes and we're gonna put them in Georgia, where there's also a state card. So that's four cubes in Georgia. As a Georgia resident, this does sadden me, but it is what it is. And we have the Georgia state card. This one is convenient as well. It says receive two buttons. We're gonna hang on to this until we actually need buttons because currently opposition has three to the suffragists two. We, we don't need to worry just yet. We'll save this for an emergency. So that was the opposition's round. Now we're back to the suffragists. Now, what we'd like to do, we can keep kind of going with the same strategy and try to do some stuff in New Jersey and get that Jersey card. Or we can start thinking about maybe moving and campaigning in other places or some sort of combination thereof. Actually, I think that we want to maybe do a combo. 
we've got the plains in the west to go work on without too much interference from the opposition just yet. Alternatively, we can try to do something like play one of these cards that lets us roll a d8 and then just clear out a bunch of red cubes in these areas. But I think we're going to hold off on that. We're going to do a little campaigning first. Or even better, it won't get us Jersey just yet, but this seems kind of nice. We can play Women to the Poles for its event. This card is going to let us add two cubes each in Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware which will let us add to New Jersey, which we're working on actively, and make a little bit of progress in a couple of other states. So maybe that's the way we'd like to go. We're gonna play this for its event, Women to the Poles, and we're gonna add one yellow and one purple cube in Jersey. We are going to get rid of this red cube in Delaware and let's put a purple in. And then we're gonna get rid of this red cube in Pennsylvania and put a yellow in. So remember, when you add two cubes to a state that already has one red cube in it, one of the cubes is spent removing the red cube, and then the other one is placed in the state that's been left empty. So we're working slowly on this part of the country right now. I'm personally very proud of our efforts, but the opposition now gets to clap back. So let's see what they're going to do. I think that the opposition is going to be on to us. And they are going to ditch this South Dakota Reject Suffrage card to do some more campaigning. So we're going to, we're going to discard that card. And then I actually don't want to do my campaigning here in the South. I want to move up here to the Plains so I can maybe go for something like Kansas or Montana. So let's go ahead and spend a button. Because you spend buttons to move a campaigner. So we've moved him. And now we're going to roll his die. So we got a roll of two, that's good enough. I'm just gonna take it. So let's go ahead and take two cubes and which of these state cards seems better? Which would we rather work on as the opposition? So our options are Kansas, which will let us add a whole bunch of cubes in this region at an opportune moment, or Montana, which will get us some more buttons. I think Kansas is looking a little more appealing right now. So we're gonna take our two red cubes and we're gonna put them in Kansas. So if we can get a couple more here, then we'll get that sweet, sweet state card and cause trouble down the line. So that was the opposition's turn. And now we're gonna go back to playing as the suffragists. What are we gonna do, ladies? All right, we got three cards left to play this turn. Let's think about what our best options would be. I actually do wanna move someone to campaign soon, but I also wanna make sure that we're good on buttons. So I'm gonna definitely play Lucy Stone at some point in the near future. And the question is, which of these cards would I like to perhaps discard? I'm gonna hope for the best over here in Atlantic and Appalachia, and we're gonna discard Francis Harper. And we're discarding her to take a campaigning action. I would like to spend one of my buttons of my two, it's precious, precious currency here, to move my yellow campaigner out here to the plains. So we're going to take it to the opposition out here. And we're going to go ahead and now we're going to roll our two campaign dice and kind of see how it goes. Because I'm not letting Kansas just go for free. Absolutely not, sir. All right, so we've rolled our two dice. It's a three and a one, not thrilling. We're gonna put the one over here and we're gonna put the three with our yellow campaigner here in the Midwest. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one purple cube in Jersey. Boom, we get the Jersey card. And New Jersey's gonna let us receive two buttons. And then we also have three cube placement potential out here in the Midwest. So for one and two, I'm gonna get rid of these cubes in Kansas. You thought I was so easily bested. Ha, you were wrong, sir. And we'll put a yellow cube in Kansas. So that was the suffragist move. Your move, opposition. So what are these dudes gonna do? I think what we may do is just keep campaigning. The reason for that is that we don't want to waste card actions doing things that don't happen. So removing support from Congress is not an issue right now. I don't have any cards that are gonna do that. The opposition can probably tell that by now. So we are gonna just discard another card and we're gonna keep fighting it out in the campaign over here in the Midwest. They're gonna hope that I'm gonna get tired of this. So we're gonna roll a uh, D4. And this time the opposition got a three. So we're gonna go one, two, three. So we're having sort of a tit for tat situation out here. And I don't know if I have the power to get Kansas right now without moving my purple campaigner out and maybe trying to overpower, but I don't want to do that just now because we've got the strategy phase coming up in the next turn. I only have one button. They've got two. I want to make sure that I have some options here. So it's back to me. And here's what I think I'm going to do actually. When you have a state card, you can play it before or after 
your main card action from your hand. So I'm going to go ahead and play New Jersey to receive two buttons. And this will just leave the game. I'll put it in my discard for now, but this should be its own separate pile, really. And I'll get two buttons. So now I'm up to three, which is pretty good. Now I can play my regular card from my hand. I can only play two more this turn. What do I want to do? I'm going to go ahead and play Lucy Stone for her event as well. Um, she's going to let me receive one more button. And I can add a purple or yellow cube in one state of each region, which is kind of nice. So how do I want to play that? There are six different regions, and I can add a purple or yellow in each. Let's go ahead and put a yellow cube in Cali, because there is a state card for that one. I'd like to contest it. Let's put a purple cube in Kansas, but it's not actually going to be there. We're just going to remove one of the reds, making it harder for our uh, opposition to mess with us. Let's go ahead and remove a cube from... Let's remove a cube from Ohio, because I'd like that Ohio card. I like card draw in this game a lot. Down here in the south, let's go ahead and remove from Florida. Let's, let's remove this cube in Virginia so we can get that state card into contention. And then up here in the northeast, let's go ahead and remove a cube from... Let's just do Vermont. So now we have done the effects of this card. Our turn is over, and we're going to have one more before this turn is over, and we can show cleanup and then the start of a new turn. Now it's the opposition's turn to respond, and I think the opposition is just determined to get Kansas. Again, the reason being that most of the cards in this hand have to do with messing around with Congress, and like that's not actually something that um, our opposition would care about that much right now. So I'm trying to play these cards in ways that are a little bit more exciting. So let's go ahead and dump Senator John Brown. And we're going to just campaign again. I think we can get it this time, unfortunately, for the suffragists. All right, so that was a one. Forget it. Let's send a button out to reroll this. It was a three. Um, and it, of course, rolled the cube all across the board. But with three, yep, the... Uh, the opposition is going to get Kansas, and they're going to get this Kansas card. So when they play it, they can add six cubes in the Plains region, no more than two per state. So we're in trouble out in the Plains. They've got this in their back pocket. So now it's the suffragist's last card play for this particular turn. I think that I would like to play the Sojourner Truth card for its event. We're going to hold on to Pioneer Women for next turn. But Sojourner Truth is going to let us roll a d8. And then I can add that number of cubes in the Midwest region, no more than one per state. Ooh, I rolled an eight. That was killer. So basically, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take that opposition. So Ohio is kind of starting to come into our possession. We may come over here and campaign in the Midwest on our next turn to try to get a little bit more support there and get those sweet, sweet state cards. So that was our last card play of this particular turn. And the opposition can come at us one more time. We're gonna hold on to the Civil War card because it prevents me from putting cubes here as a suffragist. And you're just gonna to wanna to wait until that seems like it's a ripe thing to do. It lasts the entire turn. So this is something that you might play at the beginning of next turn to block the other player as opposed to waiting on it. So instead, let's do 15th Divide Suffragist. The 15th Amendment hasn't shown up yet. And so unfortunately, I'm not gonna to get to get the full effect of this card as opposition. But we are going to go ahead and discard this one. And even though really a campaign action might be more fun, I'm down to one button. So let's say that I'm gonna take an organizing action just to show how they work. And I'll grab one button per campaigner I have in the field. So at least I can force the suffragists to spend some buttons if they want a strategy card. So that was the entirety of the first turn. And as you can see, everybody still has one card left in their hand. You're gonna carry one over to the next turn after you've done all of your card play. So we're gonna put these here. I'm gonna move these little cylinders out of the way. So our lovely opposition has two state cards in the Civil War. We've got one state card and Pioneer Women, and these will all go to discard. So now we are in the final stage of a turn, which is cleanup. So the first thing we're gonna do is advance the turn tracker to two. We're on turn two. There are no cards that need to be removed, so there's nothing that was in effect for the rest of the turn that needs to be cleaned up or any of that, so we're totally good. And then it's not the end of turn six, so we don't need to worry about whether 
that Congress has sent the 19th Amendment out or whether it's been ratified just yet. It's still early days, everyone. So cleanup is very simple this time. And then we're gonna go right back into the planning phase. So we're gonna draw six new cards for each side. And now everyone's got seven cards to work with once again, as we lock horns over the right to vote in the United States. And that leads us to the one thing that you have not seen yet, which is the strategy phase. Now we're gonna bid buttons to see if we want any of these strategy cards. So let's have a look at what they are and then make some decisions. So here are our lovely strategy cards. So Bellwether State, you can select one state and remove any red cube and add four of the suffragist cubes, or you can remove any one suffrage cube and add four red cubes. That's very useful. Oh my goodness. Transportation, move all of your campaigners to any regions without paying any buttons. Oh, that's also really good. Ooh. And then we have Eye on the Future. This is playable in turn five or six. You can look through your draw deck and select one card and play it for its event immediately and then reshuffle your draw deck. Once you know more about what cards are in there, this is actually a very nice card because your very best cards are at the bottom during the late era. So if you know that you might want something, then this is a lovely card to have. So these are all actually pretty nice strategy cards. I would really like to get, ooh, I'd really like to get Bellwether. I want Bellwether State. And of course, maybe the opposition wants transportation because they have just fewer buttons to work with. So we're feeling button rich right now. They're feeling button poor. Is the suffragists have to be the first to commit buttons to basically bid for one of the strategy cards. So I have four buttons as a suffragist. I have a choice. I can bid one, two, or maybe three. There's no point bidding four because the opposition only has two. So just kind of thinking about the strategy of that. If I bid one, then the opposition can just bid one and neither of us gets a strategy card, or they can bid two and beat me out, depending on what they wanna do. If I bid two, they could cancel me out or they can decide that they don't want in this fight at all um, and then just decide not to commit any buttons. And I still have to spend these two, but I definitely will get the strategy card. Or I can bid three and be sure that I win, but that means the opposition could just like, ah, I declined, to, I declined to commit any buttons. So I have to give up three of my buttons and they don't give up anything. So when you're considering this during your game, you have to think about the consequences because no matter how many buttons you ante up, you're gonna lose them all. And then the opposition might not lose any if they decide to just let you spend all those buttons like a fool. So I think what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm going to put up two buttons and the opposition now has a choice. They can either put up both of their buttons and just cancel us all out, but then they have no buttons and they can't move their campaigner and it's kind of a mess. Or they can decide to decline, keep their buttons and then get a big button advantage over me on the next turn. And they think that's the best thing to do. They're like, yeah, fine. Take it, just spin your buttons, lady. Uh, so I'm gonna grab Bellwether State and put it down here with my state card because they can be used in the same way. However, the opposition has two buttons, I have two, and they have a state card that's gonna let them get two more. So I may not have the advantages that I had this time on the next strategy phase. So we're gonna have to see. And then at the end, I just gotta refill the market. And reconsideration has come up. So that may be a convenient strategy card to have in a late game. So there you have it. That is a full turn and then part way into turn two of votes for women to player. Basically in order to continue this turn, we would go back where we were trading off playing cards and trying to take each other out across this map of the United States. Hopefully you found this video informative. I try to give you a good tutorial of the rules so that you could go and enjoy this game yourselves, whichever side you're playing. And I do hope you have a great time while learning a lot about history. Thank you so much for watching and happy gaming. Hark the sound of myriad voices rising in their might. Tis the daughters of Columbia pleading for the right. Raise the flag and plant the standard wave the signal still brothers we must share your freedom help us and